Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. A redacted version of the long-awaited Mueller report is now public. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Jordan Schreyer. CBS News is reviewing the more than 400-page report. So far, it reveals some of President Trump's reaction when he learned a special counsel had been appointed. Natalie Brandt has the latest from Capitol Hill. Attorney General William Barr has released a public version of special counsel Robert Mueller's long-awaited report on Russian interference in 2016. According to the report, the president said, this is the end of my presidency, when told that a special counsel had been appointed. Barr spoke this morning before releasing it. We now know that the Russian operatives who perpetrated these schemes did not have the cooperation of President Trump or the Trump campaign. Barr also concluded there was not enough evidence to establish that the president committed obstruction of justice. Mueller did not reach a conclusion on that question, and CBS News has learned the special counsel's team was split. The White House fully cooperated with the special counsel's investigation, providing unfettered access to campaign and White House documents. President Trump reacted to Barr's conclusions with a Game of Thrones-inspired tweet that says, Game over. I'm having a good day, too. It was called No Collusion, No Obstruction. The Justice Department says it plans to provide a limited number of Congress members with a copy of the report with fewer redactions than the public version. But Democrats are not satisfied. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler is demanding to see the full report, saying this is about transparency and accountability. It's outrageously irresponsible. It shows that the attorney general is, is biased. Democratic leaders are calling on Robert Mueller to publicly testify about the report's findings as soon as possible. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Mueller's report is based on more than 2,800 subpoenas, nearly 500 search warrants, and approximately 500 witness interviews. And if you would like to see that full report, you can just go to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story. Taking that live look outside right now, sunny blue skies drying up some of that rain we've had over the past few days. For what we can expect for the rest of our forecast, let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green. Yeah, nice to see that sun come back. Temperatures are responding not only in Fargo, but in the Northern Valley too. We're looking at the Red River at East Grand Forks. You can see we've got some blue sky there and River still out of its banks, of course, in East Grand Forks and rising north of there in Oslo. Of course, we're having all sorts of trouble in the Oslo area. Still looking at the river rising here as we head into Friday and also up in Pemina. Still haven't seen our crest yet, or at least our initial crest. We're looking at that going up here throughout the weekend and into next week. So. That is for the first crest for Pembina. Of course, we are in the Southern Valley seeing some places where the river is going back up because of snow melt and the rain we've seen recently. So you can check your river levels at valleynewslive.com or right on our, your mobile device on the VNL weather app. So the skies have cleared out nicely in a lot of areas. There's still some clouds there, but they're allowing the sun through. You can see we've got some good uh, sunshine for most, but there are also some rain showers out to the west that we'll be keeping an eye on for this afternoon. Other than that, it looking, it's looking like the day is turning out to be a nice one. We're at 51 currently in Fargo, and we'll see the temperatures rise a little more than that today. And we just build off of this as we head into the holiday. We'll have your forecast on that coming up in just a few minutes. Look forward to it. Thank you, Lisa. Update to a story that we have been following for months. The owner of a Fargo contracting business that went bust and took thousands of dollars from customers has been barred from doing business in North Dakota and has to pay people back. Today, the attorney general said studs to rug owner Timothy Rosine can't do business in the state for the next five years. He has been ordered to pay back roughly $122,000 in restitution to the people he ripped off. He also has to pay more than $12,000 to the state in penalties and fees. In October 2017, Rosine was investigated for taking money from clients and never doing the work, even though he knew he wouldn't be able to complete it. For more details on the lawsuit against him, just go to our website and click on this story. One man is in custody after police say he chased a woman with a gun and a knife, jumped out of a third-story window, and then ran from officers. It all started around 10 last night near 18th Avenue South and 20th Street South in Moorhead. 
A woman reported that someone had been chasing her with weapons. Police then set up a perimeter and narrowed their search to one apartment unit. After talking with one person, they called out 47-year-old Kevin Hass, who then jumped from a third-story window and took off running. The K-9 team eventually found Hass hiding in a nearby patio area. He was arrested and taken to the hospital, but is expected to be okay. Police say he will be charged with several crimes as well as a felony probation violation on a warrant. No one else was hurt in that incident. Two people are in jail after a hit and run turned into a police chase in Jamestown. It happened around 8 yesterday evening at the local Walmart. A car reportedly hit a parked car and then left the scene. Police tried to make a traffic stop, but the car took off. And that started this slow chase that you're seeing on your screen. Deputies eventually set up spike strips on Highway 20 and the car went into a field. 27-year-old Yolanda Two Hearts of Fort Totten and 27-year-old Brittany Reyes of Fargo were arrested for shoplifting, fleeing officers, and outstanding warrants. Police say the women stole over $1,000 worth of merchandise. An Eden Prairie, Minnesota man has admitted to locking his teenage daughter in a bedroom and whipping her with a tree branch and a belt. Police say 38-year-old Craig Underwood whipped the girl about 30 times leaving her with bloody and bruised wounds over much of her body. They say he was apparently upset because she was late for class and brought home someone that her family dislikes. The criminal complaint says Underwood told arresting officers that he had every right to whip his daughter. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum has signed a bill that will now let second cousins in on the ownership of family farms. The anti-corporate farming law dates back to 1932, when it was put on the ballot as an initiated measure and approved by voters. It allows corporations with as many as 15 shareholders to own farms or ranches as long as the shareholders are related. The North Dakota Farmers Union, the state's largest farm group, has opposed the measure. The group says adding more relatives who can legally form a cooperation or a limited liability corporation weaken that law. In our consumer alert this afternoon, the Sunshine State has some competition when it comes to the top destination for retirees. According to a new survey by United Van Lines, retirees are now flocking to New Mexico to enjoy their golden years. The company polled nearly 27,000 customers last year and found that 42% of those who moved to New Mexico did so because of retirement. Florida came in second and Arizona followed in third. A winemaker in Europe claims to be selling the world's most expensive wine, and it likely cost more than your car is worth. The wine is being sold for $40,000. The bottle is a 1.5 liter, hand-blown with a special cork made in Portugal. The $40,000 or $40,000 price tag, rather, is due to the amount of manual labor required to produce it.